Welcome to this week's piece. So I know it's a bit of deja vu, but it's because we're working on this guy. So he had just a few Mars in him because, you know, pine, it's very soft wood. So I used my Derms putty, filled in just any spots that were more scratches. I wasn't too worried about too many dings because the finish that we're gonna do isn't going to be a perfected finish, but I wanted to get anything that was kind of disruptive and that stood out a little bit more handled. So filled those in, gave the entire piece a scuff sand, and then we were ready for cleaning. I gave it a quick clean with my Chalk Mountain Cleaner so that I could then go in with some shellac and do the top here. So as you can see, there's a few knots and I broke through quite a bit of the finish in certain areas. So I wanna make sure that I'm getting a nice even coat over the entirety of the top. That way I don't have to go back and clean anything up. And this gives the whole top the same surface texture. So my paint looks cohesive throughout the entire process. And then I'm going to go ahead and give this a base coat of bright white. I went ahead and did two coats of this. And you know, when you have these crazy legs, it's just easier to go ahead and paint it upside down. This makes sure that you get every single angle. I feel like anytime I ever try to paint a piece like this right side up, I inevitably will find a spot that I missed. So I'll do the initial coat upside down and then everything else is right side up and I just know that I've covered all the areas and I'm not upset with myself later. And then for this, I just buy these little felt pads at the dollar store. They come in a pretty large pack and I'm going to throw some on the bottoms of the, these little feeties because I just, the chamfered edge on them was not great and I want to make sure that the wood is protected and then also that my client's floor is protected. So it's a win-win. Between each of these first base coats, I am going to take a light sandpaper and just run that along to give me a smoother finish. I don't want those brush strokes in it because this piece has quite a bit of grain texture from the wood and I would rather have that over the brush stroke texture. And you'll be able to see that later on. When I do my second coat, I do apply quite a bit of water to the top because it is a chalky style paint and that means it wants to dry up and do more pulling so if you add just a little bit of water it thins it out and makes the application much much easier and because this piece is going to have so many layers i am working in very very thin layers so you can kind of see that first coat didn't do a lot of cover just because i had it pretty thinned out because we're going to have so many layers on this i didn't want it to be completely bulked up with paint that will also help improve dry time Right, if this roundup doesn't make you think of Easter, I don't know what will. Because I was just so happy choosing these colors. And it did. It just reminded me of Easter. And conveniently, it was this past Sunday. So, again, another round with the sanding. And we will go in. This is technically the third coat with the bright white. But we are just doing it so that we have a good base to blend the other, other colors into. Now you saw my brush bouquet. I have a brush for each one of these colors. And then I also have a blank blending brush. So the first color I'm using is the deeper green. Wherever you first hit down with your brush, that is going to be where the most intense application of color is going to be. So 
I want my corners to have the most color. That's where I throw the color in with my brush and then I will blend it out from there. I will use the colored brush to start blending out and then I will go back in with my blank blending brush and I can finish up and do any correction work with that. I also have a towel and my Mr. Bottle on hand so that I can keep my blank blending brush cleaned off. And the Mr. Bottle is also to keep the paints moving and flowing because you know we have that white base, but it's, it's already starting to dry up at the top. And so you just gonna wanna keep everything wet and moving. For this kind of blend, I'm doing lots and lots of swirls. That's how I want this whole situation to be right here is just lots of swirling. And I'm doing color placement uh, strictly based off of how I feel in the moment there's no rhyme or reason to it it's just how I wanted to go about it I will say that you'll see me this whole piece is broken up into sections so you can see I'm not starting the legs yet because I want to be able to break those blends I don't like blending over areas because it's really hard to go back and match those areas to another section and you know paint is continuously drying as soon as you put it on so if you can pick a section and do that then that will just make your job so much easier. So this section here is broken up. I don't have to do the top yet because it's cut off by the lip of the very top. And then the bottom, you can see that little lip that's right there. That means I don't have to blend over those sections and that will make my life a lot easier later. Now I think all of these colors together are beautiful and vibrant and lovely. But I would not put this piece of furniture in my house because it's just too bright. So you just have to trust the process. If you like it here, you can totally stop here and you can keep these colors and this blend. And if that brings you joy, awesome, stop here. But we're gonna keep going and I'm just promising you that this isn't the end. This is just one step in the grand scheme of things. So for the rest of the blending, like up at the top and everything, I'm going to rush through it because you can kind of see what I'm doing here. It's a lot like my other blends, especially when you have that base coat down, it just makes things so much easier. And you can always go back with your same colors and re-intensify them if you want them a little darker. And you can add in more of your base color if you want to soften them down some. You just kind of go back and forth until you're happy with what you're coming up with. And I'll slow it down for this peach real quick just so that you can see the most intense part of the color again on the corner because that's where I wanted it and then I will blend out from there. The white helps turn it just a little more pastel and makes it really really easy to blend out and as you can see I'm continuously adding water to that to make it just all that much easier. And again, what's great about this type, because we're doing so many different layers, the blends don't have to be perfect. They can kind of just be almost perfect and we will get the best texture and gradients ever because we're doing so many different layers. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about with that lip, how I don't have to match the green blend right there 
because that section is separate, I can actually go in with green and just work in these smaller sections and I don't have to worry about trying to be super, super matchy with a blended color. Okay, now for our next layer, we are going to be doing a gray wash. So this is watered down. You can see it's super, super thin and drippy. I just take my brush, wipe it on every which way, doesn't matter. I'm just trying to get it on and make sure that you don't wanna leave that drip line there. If you leave drip lines in, it will resaturate that paint faster than the other parts. So make sure that you brush those out and don't just leave those drip lines unless you want that look at the end, that's fine too. But so I will just get it on. Washes really, really reactivate your paint. So you need to make sure that you're wiping it back quickly. And then you'll see all these kind of crazy strokes. If you like the streaks that it leaves, you can do that if you wanna run with the grain pattern, that's fine too. I don't want that for this. You can kind of see the wood grain popping through there. I like that look. So I wiped everything back. And then once I get light right here, I'm just taking my cloth very, very lightly and doing these swirl motions. So it will kind of add a whole other layer of color and texture and just another element to this whole piece. And it's also toning down those colors. Okay, here's where we're gonna go in with more of the neutrals. So I have a dark brown, a light brown, and then also the gray again. But I'm taking my clear glaze first, throwing that down, and this is kind of working like the white did with the paints only it won't make these pastel, it will just kind of shear them out some and give me something easy to blend over. So I'm again, choosing these colors based on how I feel, throwing them on. I kind of want a more intensity of them in certain corners. However, I still want all of those colors everywhere. So with the brush, I will get it on pretty heavy and then I'm just kind of rubbing it in. So the colors are blending and mixing, but you can still see more intensity where you initially placed them. And then I will take just a shop towel and I'm doing a ragging technique with this. And this is just pressing it in and lifting it off. And you want to keep doing this over the same spot. I don't change my rag because I want it to have all of those colors in it. And I want it to be kind of moist with the paint by the time this is finished. Because that's going to add texture make it a little more smooth. You could see when I first started ragging, it was looking a little crazy, but the more you do it, the better it looks. So you just kind of keep going with it and then it will also help mix the colors up and just do all of the most amazing things. Now I'm sealing this piece in wax. This is a gold wax. This is not a gilding wax. It is a gold sealing wax. It has a teeny tiny bit of shimmer, but still gives you kind of that satin matte look that wax does. And it's also going to add just another layer to the overall look of this and kind of help everything just kind of smoosh together. And it's just so good. So, so good. You apply this like any other wax, you put it on, let it sit, and then you're going to wipe it back. Just right there, I am completely in love. And you can kind of see all those textures and everything that we've given this piece, but it's not overly thick. And would it really be one of my pieces if it didn't have guilds on it somewhere? I didn't think so. So here I'm using rose gold and antique gold. And I'm using just a stiff brush to brush this around the corners and any areas where I want a little bit more sheen. And this piece isn't, you can still, still feel the tackiness of the gold wax that we did, which is perfect because it will help this then blend out. So I'm doing it with, again, most concentration on the edges and places where I really want more intensity and then we will go through and kind of blend it out. And I'm not cleaning the brush between the two colors because I want them to kind of meld together and be one and the same. Now 
Now I'm going to go back with my large wax brush that I applied the original gold with and I'm going to buff all of this and blend everything in so there's not just these crazy sections of metallics versus not really metallics and I moved all that stuff off the top I just had them there so you could see it I was like oh that looks crazy but rest assured the whole thing is blended perfectly and we've got all of these different colors and textures and mattes and metallics and just all these good things and you can really see the wood grain here which I just love so we've got just a lot of stuff going on with this but it's kind of subdued so it's not too crazy if you know what I mean now, um, I know I've shared kind of these blended wax things with you before, but I just want to reiterate, you do need to make sure that the wax has time to set up before you sell this piece, or at least leave a disclaimer for your client so that they know that it needs to cure for 30 days. I always let my clients know, that's the same with Polly. Polly also takes about 30 days to cure. We're not talking dry time, I'm talking cure time, where your piece is fully safe to be used and essentially manhandled. So these, I just wanted them to just look a bit more cohesive. So I took the exact same wax brush. I didn't clean it off, but I didn't add more wax. And I just hit those and let them look a little more lived in. And you guys know I like drop pulls. These all came with them. I didn't have to change out the hardware. So it worked out well. Oh, hi, Taryn here with Elegant Upgrades. And we've got this week's piece. So I think this is so lovely. She turned out beautifully. I couldn't be happier. This is one of the ones that I would consider keeping in my home because it's just, it has me right here. I'm very excited about it. So a very, very easy finish. It's just layers. So it takes a bit of time, not actual working time, but time because you kind of have to let everything sit and dry before you can go on to the next step, which is a bit of a pain. But if you have other projects to work on, it's really not that big of a deal. So overall, it doesn't take a ton of time, but in the stretch of things it does in that regard. You guys know that um, I talk about making sets and building sets of things, but when I got this as a set, it was that mini nightstand, the larger dresser, and then this thing. And it just wasn't cohesive. Like they'll have the same legs and shape, but I couldn't envision that dresser with this little nightstand and then with this larger, it's a very strange sized piece. So it would be a very large nightstand it's taller than the other nightstand, so it just it just didn't work well together as a bedroom set. So that's why I opted to split them up, and then I can this will be a piece on its own. The other nightstand, the little one you guys know last week was put together with the bed because those legs kind of went together. I just kind of mix and match when things don't work in my mind. So that's why I split this one up. I know some of you might be wondering, like, why would you make a set? and then break it apart when you're trying to make sets and think, well, that's why, because this wasn't a very cohesive set in my opinion. So that's why I opted to split it up. And I just, I'm so happy I did because I came up with this finish. So it's just all that is right with the world, I think. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's just, it's in great shape. It's one of those pieces that it's not an antique. It's not even vintage. It's from Ikea, so it's nothing special but we made it special and that's really cool. Um, this is a piece I would consider shipping on Etsy just because it's um, sturdy enough to withstand that. And I think the finish is interesting enough that it would be worth it to uh, ship on Etsy. Um, but of course, we always want those local sales because then we don't have to worry about shipping. So there's that. So I also have some really, really fun news that I'm just gonna update you via a video because I've already taken it and I was just really excited and you guys know I like to share my joy with you so that'll be coming along we'll get some photos for you to see this and I hope you guys have a wonderful week day whatever you're doing thank you so much for everything all the time you guys are incredible um thank you so much for coffees I just had Deborah got me three this morning and I'm just so thankful for you Deborah that's so so kind of you I'm getting ready to do Lucas's actual birthday party because well, I'm filming it on a Saturday. You guys will see this Tuesday. Um, but yeah, anyways, I digress. Thanks so much. You guys are amazing.
Oh, hi. Taryn here. And this is just a bit of a bonus. I know I like to share with you guys the fun things. So we had some not so fun things happen um, this past month where my car died and my husband's car died like within a week of each other. So it was just a struggle for a while. Thankfully, my father-in-law has a little tiny pickup truck um, that we could use so I could still grab furniture and deliver and things like that. So that was great. But I usually have a very small framed SUV that I did all of my work with and I didn't have that and it rains a ton here in Portland. So we've been looking for a vehicle. You guys know that we're also on a journey to buy a house. So we obviously weren't going to buy a new vehicle, but my husband finally found a vehicle and then I found this one and it's, oh, it's so huge and amazing and I just I wanted to share my joy with you because I think it's important that you guys kind of see the stumbles and then also the happiness that comes with it so this is a Durango it has three rows so there's tons of room I could fit furniture in here with Lucas which is th that was the thing that I was um, looking for when trying to find a new car um, so I found this, the gentleman who had it was just really, really kind and gracious and went over everything with me. Um, it was very well maintained. So it's, it's pretty old, but it's just, it's in great shape. And I think it'll be a really good thing for furniture, which is awesome. So anyways, I'm just very excited. And I wanted to share that with you because it was a struggle for like a month trying to figure something out. Um, but I just like taking you guys along on the journey with me. So. Anyways, here's a little tidbit. <laughs> 